Hello. Good evening, everyone. Am I audible? Please confirm. Am I audible or not? And those who are live right now, please write something on the chat box so that uh, we can have an interactive session, right? So everyone. join as soon as possible everyone okay uh, let me clear one thing that uh, from the last past few days i was facing the internet issues and today's i have finally resolved all the internet issues means in between the session the internet will never break so just don't worry from now to onwards our session will go very smoothly okay so just don't worry and i will take only 20 days to complete this subject so just be with me for the next 20 days and i am telling you basically from the computer network subjects every year 8 to 10 marks has been asked in your gate exam so if you will continue the next 20 classes okay you can easily secure 8 to 10 marks in your gate scorecard you can bring it not a problem at all so join as soon as possible everyone join as soon as possible so that i can start the session okay and those who are live right now can just write something on chat box so that i can also know that uh, who are you and from where you basically belongs everything i mean just try to make the session very interactive then only you will be able to enjoy the subject is that clear okay Okay, if you don't want to write anything, not a problem at all. Just see over here. Okay, in the last session, we were talking that uh, there are seven layers in computer network. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer. Okay, you can write the full form of also. Application layer, presentation layer, session layer, transport layer. Okay, and uh, network layer and uh, data link layer. Okay. And there is a physical layer. I am writing F H Y L because to differentiate the physical layer with the presentation layer. Okay. So what basically happen whenever the packet come from top to down? We are just thinking about the sender. Suppose there is a sender at this point. There is a sender at this point. At this point there is a sender because the sender only can create the packet and can send it. Yes or no? Who will create the packet? Those who wish to transmit yes or no suppose if i want to send my cv to somebody else so definitely i have to create my own cv file yes or no so i am a sender and those who are whom i am sending it that that is the receiver yes or no so sender will create the file and once the file is created file is, is created it will come from top to down it will come from top to down like this like this and at every layer a header will be attached at every layer the header will be attached at every layer the header will be attached okay so here at the application layer we are creating a packet so this is nothing but the data d means d basically indicating the data data okay means actual communicating data and h is the header so h1 header will be attached at the application layer similarly one this one will come to the presentation layer so the presentation layer will also attach its own header and already i have discussed at the presentation layer what is the responsibility of the presentation layer to provide the security inside the packet 
security means if you are sending a file you don't want intermediate node to read your file yes or no so definitely whatever the file you are creating you want to convert it in a encrypted form encrypted form means like from the readable format to the unreadable format so that if anyone capturing your file or the packet they cannot read the content of the packet okay so that is the encryption and the compression those are the responsibility of the presentation layer and again it will come to the session layer and what the session layer will do it will attach its own header s3 and again it will come to the project transport layer and the transport layer will also attach its own header so next this packet will come to the network layer and the network layer will also attach its header suppose this is the s5 now this packet will come to the data link layer and the data link layer will attach its own header s6 and similarly once it will come to the physical layer the physical layer will also attach its own header that is the s7 so what we are observing whenever the packet is coming from top to down just see over here whenever the packet is coming from top to down what basically happening the headers are attached so whenever the packet is coming from top to down the headers are are headers are attached yes or no attached so what information basically header contain this contain the protocols information implemented in a individual layers so in the entire computer network we will basically talk about the protocols implemented in a individual layers so once you will talk about the data link layer there are four protocols implemented inside the data link layer framing bit framing and bit stuffing flow control media access control and error control so there are four protocols that has been implemented in a data link layer so till the transport layer we have discussed in a yesterday class and suddenly the internet was broken hope you remember so what is the basic responsibility of the transport layer it is basically responsible for end to end communication plus congestion control plus congestion control congestion means it basically control the traffic how it basically control the traffic traffic that is the matter of discussion so once we will go to the transport layer section i will discuss each and everything in depth so just don't worry right now don't worry right now once we will move to the transport layer everything i am going to discuss got it everyone so see see once the packet will come to the network layer what is the basic responsibility of the network layer okay so the basic responsibility of the network layer to find out the root of packet on the basis of ip address so yesterday i have written it what is the basic responsibility of the network layer this is responsible for host to host communication transport layer end to end the network layer host to host communication means there is a host having a ip address and there is another host it is also having a another ip address so with the help of source and destination ip address means source host ip address and the destination host ip address what the sender basically do it send the ip packet ip packet which is also called the datagram packet yes or no datagram packet basically we assign the different name of packet in the different layer let me tell you okay so in application layer we basically assign the name of the packet see see in general we use the term packet and the packet have, have a different name at the different layers okay there is a reason there is a reason okay so in application layer we basically uh, say the packet name as a message or simply you can say data simply you can say data okay data now what is the basic responsibility of the presentation layer to encrypt this particular data and that's why we basically don't provide any name at the presentation layer or the session layer directly we co come to the transport layer and we basically assign the different name of the packet so at the transport layer we say the packet name as a segment as a segment so in transport layer we say the packet as a segment in application layer we say the packet as a message or data similarly in network layer we assign the packet name as a datagram data gram and in data link layer we say the packet name as a as a frame frame and in physical layer there is no name of packet why why i will talk about it so just don't worry see see 
so what is the basic responsibility of the network layer it is responsible for host to host communication and it help to find out the best route of the ip packet it help us to find out the best route of the ip packet that i have told you in a yesterday session now once the packet will come from the network layer to the data link layer so what the data link layer will do what the data link layer will do the data link layer is basically responsible for hop to hop or sometimes we say the link to link communication so let me tell you about something data link layer so data link layer about the data link layer you can say it is responsible responsible for for hop to hop or you can say link to link communication link to link communication link to link communication now again the question is arising ki sir why you are saying it is responsible for the hop to hop or link to link communication similarly i have told you about the transport layer this is responsible for end to end communication end to end communication or sometime sometime we also say process to process communication we also say process to process communication process to process communication yes or no so either you can use the term this or you can use the term this but the question arising over here why we are saying it is responsible for process to process or end to end communication this is the matter of discussion that i will discuss after some time once you will stay with me for the next 20 minutes you will get the reason of each and everything you will just get the reason of each and everything okay so so in in a data link layer we say like in a network layer we say it is responsible for host to host communication host to host communication and about the like data link layer we basically say this is responsible for the hop to hop communication or sometimes we say the link to link communication okay apart from this apart from this there are various responsibility of the data link layer that i will discuss later on once we will, because data link layer itself a biggest chapter in our gate syllabus so once you will talk about the gate syllabus every year like 3 to 4 marks has been asked from the data link layer so i will discuss the data link layer in a very like in very detail so just don't worry because itself the data link layer will take 7 to 8 lectures so now you can imagine what is the importance of the data link layer okay so so once the packet come from the data link layer to the physical layer so basically inside the physical layer there is no concept of the packet remember remember once the packet will come from data link layer to the physical layer first thing that we have to remember about the physical layer first thing is the there is there is no concept of packet no concept of packet packet in in physical layer in physical layer and that's why and that's why we do not assign any packet name in a physical layer see have we assigned any packet name at the physical layer no because there is no concept of the packet here the representation you might be thinking sir you have represented it as a packet no no these are these are these are not a packet these are the stream of bits stream of bits okay and stream of bits basically attached with the some extra bits so for the synchronization purpose we basically attach some additional bits which is the part of header which is the part of header so basic responsibility of the physical layer are like a synchronization okay so there is no concept of the packet in physical layer second point you can write you can write it only understand understand stream of bits stream of bits bits coming from upper layer coming from coming from data link layer and what is the basic responsibility of the physical layer suppose the stream of bits that is coming from the data link layer is 101100 and so on these are the stream of bits which is coming from the data link layer so what basically physical layer do so there is a device implemented there is a device implemented inside the physical layer and 
द रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी ऑफ दिस डिवाइस इज टू कन्वर्ट दिस स्ट्रीम ऑफ बिट्स इन टू सिग्नल बिकॉज आफ्टर फिजिकल लेयर देर इज नो एनी अदर लेयर आफ्टर फिजिकल लेयर देर इज नो एनी अदर लेयर मीन्स आफ्टर द फिजिकल लेयर बेसिकली देर इज अ वायर मीडियम देर इज अ वायर्ड मीडियम यस ऑनो If there is no any other layers, means means there is a wire medium which connect two different node, which connect two different node. I will give you the diagram view. Okay, I am just I will just give you the diagram view. You can just see over here. Suppose suppose there are two devices connected in this way, in this way. Just imagine a situation. Okay, just imagine a situation. Okay, so this this one is you can say this one is the sender and this one is the receiver so s basically represent or stand for sender and r basically stand for receiver okay receiver fine so just uh, like imagine a situation there is a data link layer i am not writing all the layers over here okay and after that there is a physical layer the same thing will happen over here there is a data link layer data link layer and there is a physical layer okay so in the data link layer we basically what we basically do we basically create the frames in data link layer we basically create frames so these are the frame these are the frame created created at data link layer so suppose this is the frame number f0 this is the frame number f1 and this is the frame number f2 so these are the frame and so on and so on so these are the frames created at data link layer so whenever this frame will be transmitted to the physical layer so physical layer don't understand the packet it only understand the stream of bits coming from the upper layer coming from the upper layer so when the packet will receive by the physical layer what the physical layer will do whatever the bits suppose these are the bits coming from the upper layer okay these are the bits coming from the upper layer so after the physical layer there is a wired medium which connect the two different node yes or no after the physical layer there is a wired medium which basically connect two different node yes or no so once the stream of bits will be received by the physical layer what the physical layer will do definitely it will transmit it will transmit this stream of bits into this medium into this medium so this things you either you can say this is the medium medium or you can say this is the link or you can say this is the channel whatever you can say not a problem at all so sometime we use the term this is the medium which connect two different node or you can say this is the link which connect two different node or sometime we say this is the channel whatever you want you can use it there are three di different english term that we basically use in our usual uh, way are you getting my point everyone is that clear so those who are live please write something so that we can make the session very interactive then only you will be able to feel and enjoy the subject otherwise otherwise it will become one way communication it will just become one way communication i will say something and you will be able to hear later on i will tell you mode of communication so we are basically dealing with the simplex mode we are basically dealing with the simplex mode only i am saying and you are listening and uh, don't do it don't do it the communication should be full duplex not in a simplex mode got it everyone okay fine fine so what the basically physical layer will do whatever the stream of bits coming from the upper layer it simply it simply convert this stream of bits into signal because in a wired medium only the signal can travel yes or no in a wired medium only the signal can travel so the basic responsibility of the physical layer is to convert convert stream of bits bits into into signal so once you will deal with the like physical layer there are various kind of signal okay like a digital signal digital signal and uh, plus there is a analog signal 
analog signal so how basically digital signal forms how basically analog signal form these are the responsibility of the electronics and communication branch the computer science uh, student don't deal with these things okay the actual responsibility of the computer science engineer starts from the data link layer Basic, basically the the physical layer is dealt by the electronics and communication branch because we don't have any idea about the signal so whenever there will be a noise inside the signal how to deal with it we are not bothered about it we are just not bothered about it because this is not a responsibility of a computer science students are you getting my point or not so how how to convert it into the signal how the signal will behaves okay what will happen when whenever the signal will get damaged these, these are not a responsibility of the computer science student okay the actual responsibility of the computer science student start from the data link layer and that's why we don't talk about the physical layer much okay we don't talk about the physical layer much because inside the physical layer we think about the wire what kind of wire we are creating either it is a optical fiber wire or it is a twisted pair wire and what is the mechanism of constructing the wire okay how the bluetooth device is created so these are the responsibility of the physical layer and those things are basically dealt by the electronics and communication branch okay so basically we start studying from the data link layer got it and that's why the physical layer is not in our uh, part of syllabus physical layer is just not a part of our syllabus inside the physical layer we will only deal one topic that is the switching technique later on i will tell you all the switching technique so inside the physical layer there is only one topic that we have to cover according to our get get syllabus that is the switching technique is that clear everyone everyone so here what we are observing whenever whenever the packet is coming from the data link layer to physical layer what is the basic responsibility of the physical layer to convert this stream of bits into the signal this thing is happening at the sender side because here we are talking about the sender side so at the sender side what will happen the stream of bits must be converted into a signal so that it can propagate into the medium or into the link got it and what is the responsibility of attaching this header so once you will learn about the physical layer there is a responsibility of the physical layer that is called the synchronization so for the synchronization purpose for the synchronization purpose basically we attach some additional bits along with the stream of bits along with the stream of bits and those additional bits is nothing but a part of header so whenever you are attaching additional bits along with the along with the communicating bits those additional bits is the part of always a header yes or no that i have already discussed at the beginning of my session so here 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 you can write the next point uh, it only understand the stream of bits coming from the data link layer okay next point basic responsibility of of physical layer physical layer is to converts bits into signal or or signal into bits okay so so here i have written two different thing bits into signal so these things basically happen at the sender side at the sender side and and conversion of conversion of signal into bits these things basically happen at the receiver side because at the receiving end if you will think about the receiving end just see over here so whenever whenever suppose this is the stream of bits what the sender is doing it is converting it into the signal so just think about it so whenever it is converted into signal like this 1 0 1 1 1 again 0 and so on so this signal this is the unipolar signal this is the unipolar signal where this one is representing 1 0 1 1 1 again 0 and so on again okay? and so on unipolar means 
above the x axis above the x axis we are representing a signal and that's why this is called the unipolar signal bipolar means you are just representing a signal above the x axis and below the x axis also means at the positive part and at the negative part so those things actually we don't need to discuss what are the kind of signal we don't need to discuss about it okay so once this signal will come to the receiver so the receiver must have some device some device to fetch the signal and convert it into the stream of bits yes or no stream of bits so at the receiving end what is happening it is fetching the signal and converting it into the stream of bits yes or no it is basically fetching the signal and converting it into the stream of bits so at the receiving end the responsibility of the physical layer is to convert the like signal into the bits and the same thing i have written over here i have written over here so now you must be thinking sir what is the responsibility of the header over here so what is the responsibility of header so header means additional bit we are introducing header basically means additional bits we are introducing for some purpose yes or no so so uh, you can note it down over here you can just note it down over here okay note down over here header header basically mean basically means we are introducing introducing some additional bits additional bits so whenever you are introducing some additional bits must be you are calculating it with some logic must be you are calculating these additional bits with some logic and those are nothing but the protocol okay so whenever you are introducing some additional bits means you are calculating it with some logic so you can write we are introducing some additional bits with some logic with some logic logic for some purpose for some purpose so what is your purpose to control the error to access the media or for the framing or to control the congestion yes or no so whenever we are introducing some bits it has some purpose for which purpose or for which protocols you are going to introduce these bits okay and that that we will discuss in the entire computer network okay so here here we have introduced in a physical layer we have introduced these additional bits for the synchronization purpose okay so so here you can write we introduce additional bits additional bits as a header as a header for synchronization synchronization okay for synchronization clear so this is all about all about the layer architecture and these things are happening at the sender side now let's talk about the receiving end let's talk about the receiving end means what will happen whenever this stream of bits will reach to the receiving end so let's think about the receiving end okay so just think about the receiving end suppose this is the receiver this is the receiver okay so again the receiver will have all the layers like physical layer okay data link layer network layer okay transport layer session layer presentation layer and then application layer so so whenever the like signal will signal will reach over here like this the signal will reach over here what the physical layer will do it will extract the stream of bits from here so here like 101101 and so on this stream of bits will be extracted from the signal so once this stream of bits will be extracted from this signal what the physical layer will do definitely the physical layer will remove its additional bits means those are the part of header so simply you can represent this sequence of bits into the form of 
like a header and data header and data just, just think about it this stream stream of bits that you are fetching over here it is represented in the form of this so i am writing these things on the right hand side on the right hand side okay on the right hand side so just see over here see over here and inside this packet the stream of bits are like this one zero one 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 zero one and so on so definitely in this stream of bits there will be a some additional bit that is the s7 and the remaining are acting as a data so what the physical layer will do once the stream of bits is extracted it will remove these additional bits and it will send the rest part to the data link layer so once the rest part will be received by the data link layer what the data link layer will do again the data link layer have a header that is the s6 and the remaining as a data so so at the receiving end it has some mechanism to verify whether the packet or the frame receive is correct or not so see uh, suppose i am at the destination part suppose just take a real life example suppose i am sending you a parcel i am sending you a parcel suppose there is a like a uh, varun varun whom i am sending a parcel and suppose by mistake that parcel has received by its neighbor what its neighbor will do will its neighbor or his neighbor will receive the packet or the like parcel that i have sent no because the neighbor will first of all check the address written over the parcel if the address is matching with the neighbor address then only he will accept the parcel otherwise he will guide the parcel man that is the postman that this is not my parcel you go to my uh, like a uh, near house because the house number is given as like this one this one you just visit over there that is the correct destination the same thing will happen in a computer network also so whenever the packet is received by the data link layer data link layer the data link layer first of all verify its header so after the verification of header now here also the question is arising sir how can we verify the header so there is a address mechanism there is a address mechanism basically in computer network we use four kind of address that i will discuss later on so with the help of some addressing mechanism it will verify whether the receipt packet is correct or not if the receipt packet is correct then only it will accept the packet and whenever you are accepting the packet so definitely you will remove this header and you will send the remaining part to the upper layer the remaining part to the upper layer so this is the remaining part which, which is sent to the network layer so again the network layer have also a header that is the s5 so on the basis of this header the network layer will verify whether the receive datagram packet is belong to me or not whether the receive datagram packet belongs to me or not if it belongs to me then what i will do i will accept it or if it does not belongs to me then simply the network layer will drop the packet drop means destroy the packet or in computer network term we simply say the network layer will discard the packet so either you can use the term drop destroy or you can say discard so discard is the term used in a computer network this is the standard term so if the packet belongs to me i will accept it if the packet does not belong to me so simply i will discard the packet discarding means if you are discarding the packet means you are not acknowledging for this packet to the sender are you getting my point or not because in a, in a network in a network whenever the receiver is receiving a packet definitely it has to acknowledge about its receiving about it receiving like in in our general life whenever i receive the parcel from somebody what i do i basically call him and tell him that yes i have received this parcel because here we have a calling mechanism to acknowledge the things yes or no to acknowledge the things but in a computer network we don't have this kind of opportunity because even the calling mechanism require the computer network require the concept of computer network so inside the computer network whenever we are sending a packet we need a acknowledgement from the receiving end suppose i am a sender i am sending a packet so definitely i will expect for the acknowledgement for what whether the packet that i have sent 
has been received successfully or not yes or no whether the packet i have sent has been received successfully or not for that reason we basically expect for the acknowledgement yes or no so if the receiver is discarding the packet so definitely it will never send it will never send the acknowledgement and once the acknowledgement will not receive then how the sender will react how the sender will react and what are the parameters involved over there that i will discuss later on those are the part of discussion okay so simply what we are understanding over here so once the network layer will verify its header and once after the verification it has been confirmed that the packet belongs to this network layer so definitely definitely before sending this packet to the transport layer what the network layer will do definitely the network layer will remove this header yes or no definitely the network layer will remove this header and will send the rest of the part to the transport layer so what we are observing over here at the receiving end at the receiving end whenever the packet is coming from uh, like coming from bottom to top whenever the packet is coming from bottom to top the headers are removed headers are removed yes or no headers are removed so if the same thing will happen if the same thing happen then what will happen over the application layer just think about it this is the header h1 and this is the data so once the at, at once at the application layer the verification will be done because after in the in the application layer directly user interact user interact through what through browser through browser yes or no at the application layer basically the user interact through the browser so once the verification is done at the application layer what the application layer will do the application layer will simply remove this header the application layer will simply remove this header and this data will be sent to the user browser yes or no means this is the actual data or actual file the sender has been created yes or no this is the actual file the sender has been created means if i am taking a selfie if i am taking a selfie at the sender end and i am sending it to the varun varun means the varun is receiving that particular picture that i have sent but in between the networks the various headers are involved but once the receiver will receive means once the varun will receive the varun will only receive the actual communicating data that i have sent and actual communicating data means the file that i have sent and the file could be a image file video file doc file okay excel sheet file whatever it can be got it everyone ab devilliers that i have discussed now devilliers that i have discussed what is the use of header see inside the header the protocols informations has been given once you will attend my starting first lecture you will get the idea about the header inside the header header is what header basic contain the additional bits which is apart from the communicating bits yes or no so once you are introducing additional bits inside the data inside the data means it should have some purpose so for what purpose we are basically introducing some additional bits to handle the protocols to handle the protocols yes or no in a different layer we basically implement different different protocols so how you can implement the protocol inside the packet because the packet have a two different part one is the data and second one is the header data means actual communicating data and header is the additional bits so if you are implementing a protocols then definitely you have to introduce some additional bits because the protocols can never be implemented without the support of additional bits got it devilier bhai are you getting my point so header is the additional bits which basically handle the protocols of the different layer 
different layer suppose in a network layer just take an example in a network layer we basically use the concept of ip addressing i'm just giving you a simple example in a network layer we apart from ip addressing ip addressing there are various other protocols also like routing protocols are you getting my point or not but we are only talking about internet protocol ip means internet protocol so in a network layer we basically implement the concept of ip addressing so definitely inside the packet you have to introduce source ip and destination ip so where you are going to implement the source ip and des destination ip so whenever you are implementing these two ip address is 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 it the part of communicating bit no this is source ip and destination ip is not a part of communicating bit this is the supporting bit which will which will only help us to deliver the packet from one point to the another point and this is nothing but a protocol this is nothing but the protocol where you are going to introduce these additional bits inside the header yes or no so header basically use to handle the protocols of the individual layers clear mr av devlier any other question anyone if you have any query you can ask me like freely just don't worry okay if you have any query any questions you can just write on the chat box and try to make the session interactive everyone everyone any kind of qu query just don't hesitate to ask your like a uh, question got it because whenever you wish to ask something just behave like a child just behave like a child because once you will look upon the child the child never have a hesitation to ask something the child can ask anything maybe the question could be funny sometime sometime maybe the question could be very funny but still we enjoy because this is the learning process this is the learning process and during the learning process it might be possible the the question that you are going to ask could be very simple for the other student but you no need to wo uh, like worry or bother about the other student this is your query and you have to sort it out got it everyone are you getting my point or not samajh mein aaya bhai so if you have any query any kind of question you just ask like a child prince kd yes sir okay fine fine so these things basically happen at the receiving end so once the header will be removed one by one by the individual layer at the receiving end so finally finally the user which is interacting directly with the application layer through the browser so finally once the application layer will remove its header so finally this particular data will be will be will be thrown to the browser and then you are able to you are able to see the actual data that has been sent by the sender just try to think about this particular sender just try to think about this particular sender in this sender in this sender point this is the data so definitely definitely through this browser you have created a file you have created a file and send it over here at the application layer i mean suppose suppose if you want to share a pic or any doc file doc file okay you want to send a like jpg file or any doc file so definitely this is nothing but the actual communicating data so once this communicating data will be delivered to the application layer the application layer is simply attaching its on header so this data is nothing but the pic or the doc file or anything the sender has created and similar file has been received by the similar file has been received by the receiver over this point is it clear nitin good evening nitin uh, actually i was facing uh, internet issues from the last one month okay from the last one month actually what happened uh, like th there is very frequent power cut in up i am just staying in allahabad uh, for uh, like formerly it was allahabad now it is a prayagraj and there is a very frequent power cut 
so once the power is cut uh, the internet has been broken internet has been broken and that's why the session which is in a running mode suddenly got stopped so that was the problem that was the problem i was facing from the last like uh, you can say the last one month but today i have resolved it and that's why at the beginning of my session i have told you told all of you that from now to onwards you are not going to means your classes is not going to hamper in between the session so once i will start i will finish it very smoothly without any hurdles or you can say hassle you can use any english term not a problem at all samajh mein aaya bhai nitin anyone else if you have any query you can ask me my dear friends you can just ask me because after this i am going to discuss a new topic that is called that is called addressing mode addressing mode okay and after that i will discuss the movement of packet okay see see write the heading addressing mode addressing okay addressing modes so in computer network in computer network we basically use four kind of addresses okay in computer network we basically use four kind of address first one is the called mac address mac address okay second one is the second one is the ip address ip address third one is the port address port address and the last one is the specific address specific address now let's see one by one let's see one by one the mac address basically implemented basically implemented in data link layer the mac address means concept of the mac address is basically implemented in data link layer and what is the size of mac address this is of 48 bit size 48 bits size okay and the ip address basically implemented in a network layer and the size of the ip address is 32 bits 32 bits okay and the port address basically implemented in a transport layer transport layer and the size of port address is 16 bits 16 bit and the specific address is basically used in a application layer and here the size of specific address has no fixed size no fixed size so you can just consider the like example of the specific address like this for example example in application layer we basically type something in url url bar yes or no in application layer how we basically try to access any server in application layer we basically type something in the url bar url bar and access the server suppose if you we use if you wish to access the gmail server you, what you will write www.gmail.com if you if you wish to access flipkart server so definitely you will write www.flipkart.com yes or no so a yeah, example of the specific address you can write like this www.gmail.com okay gmail.com so this is nothing but server domain name server domain name name which we basically type which we basically type in url bar yes or no so basically user interact directly with the application layer so in a application layer you can easily type www.gmail.com to access the gmail server to access the gmail server so this has no any specific size so what is the need of this particular type of addressing mode we will discuss later on we will discuss later on if you want to understand right now you, you can just think about it like just think about the phone call history see for the human being it is quite difficult to remember the num numbers yes or no suppose if you want to call somebody and in your phone list there are thousand numbers available 
there are thousand number available and if you want to call any anyone anyone so you have to type that particular 10 digit number and remembering your number is quite difficult for the human being but remembering a name is quite easier for the human being so what we basically do basically we map the number with the name so we basically save the number with the help of name because remembering remembering the name is quite easy easier in comparison to the number yes or no so basically we save the number with the help of name and whenever you type the name actually what happened with the help of name we cannot call anybody so basically on the background of that particular name there is a number hidden so actually the call is made through the number not through the name are you getting my point or not and that is the reason that is the reason we basically implement a specific address at the application layer see if you want to access the gmail server what you can do you can write the ip address on the url bar also once you will write the ip address inside the url bar you can you can also access the gmail server not a problem at all but how many ip address you will remember are you getting my point or not by typing the ip address inside the url bar also you can access the gmail server but remembering the various ip address for the various server is quite difficult because there are like crore of uh, like servers how many ip address you will basically remember so basically we try to access the server with the help of name not with the help of number and that is the purpose of a specific app address implemented at the application layer so mainly we have to deal with the mainly we have to deal with the three different these three different kind of addressing mode how these addressing mode supports an ip packet to move from one host to the another host so let's try to uh, think about it let's try to think about it here here once i will start explaining these things you will be able to understand an overview of how basically ip packet move from one host to the another host and why we are saying the network layer is responsible for host to host communication data link layer link to link communication and transport layer process to process communication or sometimes we say host uh, like uh, end to end communication those clarity you are going to have once i will discuss these three addressing mode okay so let's see let's see let's see one by one okay so the mac address basically implemented in data link layer ip address network layer and port address at transport layer port address at transport layer so just see over here just see over here i'm just taking an example suppose this is the one of the host this is the one of the host and this is the another host another host and these two hosts are connected through two intermediate router two intermediate router so just uh, imagine this is the host ha and this is the host hb hb so h basically represent host and a basically represent node okay and these are the two intermediate router this is the router r1 and this is the router r2 okay now now these are connected in this way these are connected in this way in this way in this way now uh, let's see something about the router router okay so router it is a layer 3 device it is a layer 3 layer 3 device later on i will discuss broadly about the router so just don't worry right now just try to understand exactly what is the meaning of layer 3 device see whenever we are saying layer 3 device means only three layers are available inside the router starting from the bottom starting from the bottom so whenever we are saying layer 3 device means only there are three layers available physical layer data link layer and 
network layer okay so this is the reason we are saying this is the layer 3 device 1 2 and 3 because only three layers are available inside the router is that clear but this is the host host means this is the computer we are assuming this is the computer so my dear friends whenever we are saying a computer means all the seven layer will be in working mode yes or no whenever we are saying a computer then all the seven layers will be in a working mode so definitely if it is a computer if it is a computer or you can say the host then all the seven layers will be in working mode like application layer presentation layer session layer transport layer network layer data link layer and physical layer and physical layer like this okay like this now if host HA wish to communicate with the host HB definitely definitely it will create a packet in a network layer actually the packet will be created in a application layer but we are skipping all these all these all these layers we are directly starting from the network layer we are directly starting from the network layer for the time being okay so once this particular node wish to communicate with this host or you can say if this particular host wish to communicate with this host then definitely it has to know the IP address of this particular host yes or no IP address of this particular host and the IP address is basically implemented in a network layer the IP address basically implemented in a network layer now let's see let's see about the network layer so what will happen what will happen in a network layer so definitely inside the network layer the packet will be created and inside the packet there will be a three different thing source IP destination IP and this is nothing but the data so inside the source IP suppose the IP of IP of this node is A and the IP of this node is B we are just assuming this the IP address of the host HA is A and HB is B so definitely in place of source IP you are going to implement A and in place of destination IP you are going to implement B now the, with the help of source IP and destination IP the packet has been created in a network layer in a network layer now once the packet will be created in a network layer see until and unless you will get source IP and destination IP you cannot create a packet in a network layer because in a in, inside the network layer we basically use the concept of IP addressing concept of IP addressing and remember one thing more there are various other things those are going to be implemented inside the network layer that I am not discussing right now there are also various other protocol like uh, you can say routing protocol that we basically implement inside the network layer but right now we are not talking about the routing protocol those are the matter of discussion see in the in the introductory part I cannot discuss all the network layer because discussing a network layer will take almost 15 to 20 hours so that particular 20 hours part I cannot cover in a half an hour and that's why I'm trying to give you a best possible introduction of the computer network are you getting my point or not so we are considering only one thing about the network layer that is the source IP and destination IP so once the source IP and the destination IP is decided decided in a network layer the packet will be created and once this packet will be created definitely it will be transmitted to the lower layer that is nothing but the data link layer so so this packet will come to the data link layer now now suppose this is the situation so this packet is come to the data link layer so whenever the packet is coming from upper layer to lower layer what the lower layer like data link layer will do it will attach its own header attaching the header basically means encapsulating the header means whatever coming from the upper layer like try to imagine this like uh, try to imagine this like this okay suppose this is the suppose this is the packet packet created at network layer now this packet is coming from the network layer to me and I am the data link layer I am sitting at the data link layer so once this packet come from network layer to me what I will do I will only attach my own header okay so this is the header which I am going to use 
so simply i will attach this header to this packet and then i will drop this to the physical layer are you getting my point or not so attaching the header you can also say encapsulating the header simply okay so here what is happening whatever coming from the upper layer what the data link layer will do it will simply attach its own header but what are the informations available inside the header see there are various information that we are going to use that we are going to use because in a data link layer we use different different protocols different different protocols so right now i'm not going to discuss all the protocols information all the protocols information but one thing is must that the data link layer will introduce source mac address and destination mac address because in the data link layer we are going to use the mac address in data link layer we are going to use the mac address whose size is 48 bit whose size is 48 bit and data link layer is basically responsible for link to link communication already we have discussed yes or no link to link communication so definitely if you want to create a packet or you can say frame in data link layer you require two things source mac and destination mac so see whenever we basically purchase a computer from a shop basically the mac address is imprinted inside the nic card which is which is remains fixed for a particular device which is which remains fixed for a particular device please try to understand whenever you purchase any laptop or computer from any shop basically the mac address remains fixed means it is basically imprinted in your nic card nic card means the mac address remains fixed for a particular device for a particular device but the ip address never remains fixed for any device are you getting my point or not suppose i am accessing accessing a internet from here and after some time what i have done i have i have just removed the internet connection and i have taken my laptop to delhi and in my friend's home i have again started accessing the internet my dear friend the ip address that i was using over here and the ip address that i am going to use in delhi will remain same no no because whenever you are changing a network your ip address will change whenever you are changing a network you are switching from one network to another network your ip address will change but the mac address will remain same in both the point because the mac address is basically imprinted inside your device inside your device so the ip address could change for any devices but the mac address will also always remains unique in the universe in the universe are you getting my point or not so here here until and unless the source mac and the destination mac has been decided the data link layer cannot create the packet so the creation of packet in a data link layer require two things source mac and destination mac see if any source node is creating a packet it knows its own mac address if i am a sender i am a source node if i am creating the packet i i will always know my own mac address because it is imprinted inside my device so suppose just take a like suppose the mac address of this device is m0 the mac address of this device is m0 now now suppose this router have a two different port this port and this port from which the wire has been connected this this router having two different port this one and this one and this device has a only one port again this device has a only one port so please try to understand the concept of the mac address concept of the mac address suppose suppose this is the router this is the router and this router is having is having multiple port like this multiple port like this this so there are uh, and this is the router this is the router so basically we purchase the router from the market and according to the number of port available inside the router the cost vary yes or no the cost of the router basically vary are you getting my point or not because here you can connect six different system through this router and that's why the cost is suppose x if you are purchasing any other router in which there are four port 
so the cost will be low yes or no so whenever the manufacturer create the router then the manufacturer basically assign like unique mac address to each and every port so suppose the mac address of this port is m0 this one is m1 this one is m2 this one is m3 this one is m4 and this one is m5 so if the router is having six different port then for every port a unique mac address will be assigned are you getting my point or not a unique mac address will be assigned so the num whatever the number of port inside the available inside the router you will require that number of that number of mac address that number of mac address and this is basically imprinted inside each and every port are you getting my point or not and it remain fixed in the universe so similarly over here if this router having two different port so each port will assign a unique mac address so suppose the mac address of this port is m1 and this port is m2 this port is m3 and this port is m4 and in a computer there is only one port through which you are like connecting a internet because whenever you purchase a computer through the market you have only one port through which you are connecting a internet and just look upon your laptop there is also one port through which you are connecting a internet so in your laptop there is only one mac address available only one mac address available because to each port we basically assign a unique mac address okay so here you can see this is the mac address this is the mac address assigned to this port to this port means to this computer so my dear friends my dear friends if if inside the data link layer this packet will be created in the source mac in the source mac this is the suppose source mac and this is the suppose destination mac means in place of source mac we are going to place what m0 m0 but in destination mac what you will place m1 or directly suppose this is m5 this is m5 what you are going to place in a destination mac m1 or m5 just tell me just tell me everyone whatever you think you just speak out then only you will be able to learn see either we will do some mistake or we will learn we are nothing losing over here got it so see see how many links are there between source and destination suppose suppose this is the source node source node and this is the destination please try to understand destination node so between source and destination how many links are available this is the first link l1 this is the second link l2 and this is the third link l3 whenever we are using a term link basically link connect two node directly yes or no whenever we are using a term link means it basically connect two node directly yes or no so here here two nodes are connected through this link these two nodes are connected through this link and these two nodes are connected through this link so there are three different links available between the source and destination and what i have told you the data link layer the data link layer is basically responsible for link to link communication link to link communication means if you want to send a packet if you want to send a packet through this link you will require source mac as this and destination mac as this because to travel in this link you will require this particular mac address as a destination mac address because in this link the source point is this 
and the destination point is this then only the link to link communication can be established so over here what you can do you can just write m1 you can just write m1 now you might be thinking sir how this particular node will be able to know the mac address of this particular port this is again a question which is arising in your mind which is arising in your mind so again this is the matter of discussion how this particular source node is able to identify the mac address of this particular port there are two different uh, like method method that you can implement first one you can enter this mac address manually inside this device or you can find this mac address dynamically means at the run time at the run time whenever i wish to send a packet i will find the mac address so to find out the mac address of this particular port it has to implement some protocol and that is called the arp protocol arp basically means address resolution protocol address resolution protocol that i will discuss in network layer so once we will go to the network layer i will discuss arp protocol in details because till now five to six question has been asked in the last 32 years from the arp concept from the arp concept so i have told you two different approach either you can enter this mac address manually inside this host again i will discuss what will happen if you are going to store this mac address manually inside this host what is the difficulty is that we are going to face if we will store the static entry of this mac address and what how you can resolve this difficulty with the help of dynamically dynamically finding the mac address of this particular port so to find out the mac address of this particular port dynamically we basically run a protocol that is called the arp protocol which we basically discuss in a network layer so suppose somehow somehow this particular source node has find out the mac address of this particular port so what will happen the packet in a data link layer will be created and once the packet in a data link layer will be created it will send to the physical layer and what is the responsibility of the physical layer the physical layer basically convert the stream of bits into a signal because after the physical layer there is a wired link there is a wired link so simply the physical layer will convert this stream of bits into the signal and this packet will be transmitted through this link so after some time after some time the packet will visit to the router r1 now let's try to think what will happen at the router r1 so router is a router is the layer 3 device layer 3 device means there will be a physical layer data link layer and network layer so just think about it there is a physical layer data link layer and network layer i'm repeating the same thing network data and physical so my dear friends whenever the packet will visit to the router r1 definitely it is going to visit through the physical layer physical layer so in a physical layer what will happen the physical layer will will extract a stream of bits from the signal available inside the medium so what the physical layer of the router r1 will do it will find out it will find out the stream of bits from the signal signal available inside the medium so once the stream of bits ha has been fetched or you can say once the stream of bits has been read read what it will do it will simply send it to the data link layer it will simply send it to the data link layer so my dear friends inside the data link layer inside the data link layer what is going to happen please try to understand we, we, we are just thinking about data link layer we are just thinking about data link layer so inside the data link layer there is a source mac m0 there is a destination mac m1 and this is the data so this packet will be received at the data link layer data link layer of what data link layer of router r1 so once this packet will be received by the data link layer of router r1 it will verify the data link layer will verify whether the incoming packet belongs to me or not yes or no because whenever a parcel is reaching to your home so definitely you never accept it blindly yes or no suppose a postman has 
reach to your home and he is saying this is the parcel for you so you, you, you never accept the parcel blindly it might be possible because human have a different nature if you are getting something free you will definitely accept it later on you will verify it because this is the nature of human being this is the nature of human being but here here inside the computer network all the things happen according to the code that we have written according to the code or the logic that we have implemented so it cannot do any false things the network cannot do any false things it will always follow the instructions that we have given we have given so once the packet will reach or once the parcel will receive by the like receive by the me then first of all i will verify whether this parcel belongs to me or not if it is belonging to me then i will accept it and how can we verify i will look upon the destination address yes or no i will simply look upon the destination address whether it is matching with my address or not the same thing will happen over here once this packet will receive by the data link layer of router r1 router r1 the router r1 will check the destination mac will check the destination mac because this is the destination mac it will check the destination mac if this destination mac is matching with the mac address of this port then accept the packet otherwise reject the packet since this destination mac is matching with the mac address of this port so what the data link layer will do it will accept the packet and once the packet has been accepted it will send it to where network layer but but before sending it to the network layer what the data link layer will do data link layer no this is the part of header and this is this is not concerned with the network layer so what i will do i will simply remove the header and then only i will send the packet yes or no because header of the data link layer has no use in a network layer header of the data link layer have no use in a network layer so before sending the packet what the data link layer will do it will simply remove the header and will send rest of the rest part of the packet so here once the destination mac address has been verified once the destination mac address is verified it will it will simply remove the header because this is the part of header and then will send the remaining part to the network layer now now the same packet will reach to the network layer now in the network layer network layer there is a source ip destination ip and data so this is the source ip a and this is the destination ip b suppose the ip address is of size 32 bit now when this packet will reach to the network layer what the network layer will do what the network layer will do it will simply look upon where destination ip it will simply look upon the destination ip and according to the destination ip it will take a decision from which interface this packet has been forwarded just think about it just think about it suppose suppose this is the router this is the router and these are the these are the outgoing path outgoing path suppose one packet is coming through this particular port through this particular port and these are the outgoing path these are the outgoing path and this is the router r so my dear friends whenever this is the ip packet this is the ip packet so whenever i am using a term ip packet it means inside the packet there will be a two address definitely source ip and destination ip so once this ip packet will reach to the router r1 so inside the router r1 there is three layer network data link layer and physical layer so once the packet will visit to the network layer so the network layer will check what destination ip and on the basis of destination ip it will find out the root of the ip packet root of the out ip packet so so here what will happen on the basis of on the basis of destination ip address ip address the router router will find find outgoing outgoing root root of 
that packet because from this router from this router there are three outgoing route okay suppose this is the route like uh, you can say this is the route r1 this is the r2 and this is the r3 r3 suppose this packet having a destination here having a destination here and what will happen if the router will forward this packet through this link definitely it is going to be received by the wrong destination it is going to be received by the wrong destination so it is the responsibility of the router to find out the right path of this particular ip packet so actually what the router is doing whatever the ip packet is reaching to this router it will simply forward the packet it will simply forward the packet through the outgoing link through the outgoing link but whenever it is forwarding the packet it is doing some calculation which path which path derive the right destination of this packet yes or no so to find out the right destination of this packet definitely the sum calculation is made inside the router and that's why means the router has a processing capability of the ip packet so my dear friends until and unless we will process the ip packet we cannot find out the right destination or right outgoing link of the ip packet yes or no to find out the right outgoing path of the ip packet we need to process the incoming ip packet so the basic responsibility of the router is to forward the ip packet on the basis of destination ip on the basis of destination ip okay it will never modify it will never modify the ip packet it will simply look upon the destination ip do some processing and will find the right outgoing path the right outgoing path suppose suppose like just think about the real life scenario just think about the real life scenario suppose this is the point and one point is going to delhi and second point is going to like kolkata and third or uh, like link is going to bilai like this okay bilai okay and any bus suppose any bus is coming through this path through this path okay so in this bus inside the destination destination ip it is mentioned as kolkata 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 so when this bus will reach to this point and this is nothing but the router router so until and unless the router will find router will find where which link which link is deriving the destination host kolkata it cannot send the packet so the router has some processing capability to find out to find out which link is deriving the destination kolkata so definitely first of all this router will find out which link is deriving deriving the destination kolkata and after finding it out it will send it to the right link means ultimately the router is deciding right outgoing link so you can just write right outgoing link so router basically find finds right outgoing link on the basis of on the basis of destination ip on the basis of destination ip again this is the matter of discussion how a router can find the right or the correct outgoing link how the router can find the correct outgoing link so to know about this you have to understand the internal configuration of the router entire concept of the ip addressing subnetting supernetting everything you have to understand first of all so this is the matter of discussion and these things we will discuss in a broad way once we will come to the network layer once we will come to the network layer once you will be able to understand the internal configuration of the router once you will understand the concept of the ip addressing subnetting each and everything then only you will be able to decide how the router is finding out the right or the correct outgoing link that i will discuss once we will move to the network layer i will discuss each and everything so exactly what is happening over here once the packet will reach to the network layer the network layer is not going to modify this packet 
because there is no any upper layer because if there is a transport layer available above the network layer only then the header will be removed but since there is no any upper layer so the header is not going to be removed so on the basis of destination ip the network layer will find out the best route and once the route has been decided suppose this router has decided this is the route through which the packet has to be forwarded just imagine a situation suppose this router has decided this is the route or you can say link through which the packet has to be forwarded so definitely definitely once this decision has been taken what will happen the packet will come from the network layer to data link layer so again again inside the data link layer once the packet will come from once the packet will come from network layer to data link layer what will happen this is the packet in network layer and it is coming from network layer to data link layer so what will happen what will happen in a data link layer you require two address source mac and destination mac so once the router router has decided the packet has to be forwarded through this link so definitely in this link what is the source mac m2 and what is the destination mac that is the m3 so definitely this network layer is passing this information this information to the data link layer means the layers are also communicating with each other because until and unless the network layer will give the information that the packet will be forwarded through this link this data link layer cannot find the source mac address source mac address so definitely the network layer is conveying the information that the packet has to be forwarded through this link and that's why the data link layer is able to put the source mac and this particular dest destination mac either you can put it manually or you can just find it out dynamically so to find it out dynamically you will require a protocol that is called the arp protocol so once the link has been decided you can easily put source mac and destination mac or you can easily decide the source mac and destination mac and you can create a packet in a data link layer so my dear friends once the packet has been created to the data link layer it will send to the physical layer and once the packet is sent to the physical layer definitely it will start moving to this link and the similar thing will happen at the router r2 similar thing will happen at the router r2 again router is the layer 3 device so there will be a three layer network layer data link layer and physical layer so first of all the packet will visit to the physical layer and then it will go to the data link layer again inside the data link layer of the router r2 the verification will be done whether the incoming packet belongs to me or not and this verification could be done with the help of destination mac so if the destination mac available inside the packet is matching with the destination mac mac of this then only accept the packet otherwise discard the packet yes or no again the similar thing will happen at the router r2 and once the router inside the router means inside the network layer of the router r2 network layer net inside the network layer of the router r2 on the basis of destination mac it will find out the route and once the route is decided it will throw the packet through this link and finally the packet will reach to the right destination so my dear friends here i have only given you a overview of movement of packet a simple overview of movement of packets got it and the real feel you will have once you will complete entire concept of the data link layer and the network layer so once i will complete the network layer in the third chapter i will again discuss the movement of packet there you will have a feel because at that point of time you will be able to know the entire protocols of the data link layer entire concept of the ip addressing the internal configuration of the router the internal configuration of the switch because at that moment you will have a entire concept of the data link layer and network layer and that's why you will feel at that moment how actually the packet is moving throughout the network throughout the network so ultimately during the movement of packet what we are observing please try to understand see see at every link at every link the source and the destination mac address are changing see 
in this particular link the source and mac address is this but in this particular link the source and mac address is this so at every link the source and mac address are changing source and mac address are changing but throughout the journey of packet the ip address means source and the ip address remains same remains same remains same and from here the definition of the data link layer and the network layer has come since the mac address is changing in every link that's why we say the data link layer is responsible for link to link communication link to link communication because on every link the mac address are changing so you can write it down in your notes you can write write it down in a very simple way since at every link the source and the mac address are changing and that's why that's why the data link layer is responsible for link to link communication because at every link these are changing but throughout the journey of ip packet the source ip and the destination ip remains same and that's why the network layer is responsible for host to host communication because the packet is originated from this source and it is going to this destination and throughout the journey the source ip and the destination ip remains same and that's why the network layer is responsible for host to host communication and data link layer is responsible for link to link communication are you getting my point or not why we are saying uh, like uh, the link layer is responsible for link to link communication and the network layer is responsible for like host to host communication i hope right now you have a clarity about this you have a clarity about this yes or no so i am ending this right now but i will suggest you one thing at the beginning of my session already i have told you go read first two chapter of the forozen forozen is the computer network book okay if you don't have you can ask me i will give you the soft copy i will just give you the soft copy just don't worry if you don't have a soft copy of the forozen book i will give you the soft copy but must read starting two chapter of the of that book because that will that will give you the entire overview of computer network now once you will start reading it definitely you are going to enjoy it i am telling you my dear friends once you will start reading the first two chapter of the computer network definitely you are going to enjoy all the things written over there because till now a little bit little bit your mind has been opened okay so definitely you are going to enjoy all the things written over there so i i am just expecting you will come tomorrow after reading the starting two chapter of the computer network book written by farozan okay so that's all this uh, for today's session we will again meet tomorrow at the same time 7 pm okay so what i am expecting uh, like uh, just share this uh, like uh, share this link to to your maximum frame circle so that so that whenever i will start the session there will be a at least some crowd at least some crowd so that both can enjoy the session because once the crowd will happen definitely you will also enjoy the subject and i will also get some motivation to teach you in better way in the next level okay so bye everyone take care see you tomorrow sharp at 7 pm